Okay, so today's topic is going to be inverse trigonometric function. Um, like I said, we have used this concept. Okay, first of all, I like to talk about why we why we have to do this. So the reason why we have to learn this is because it is important for us to know how to use trigonometric function, which is your Sokatua, and also how to use the inverse operation of it. So sometimes you are given angles and you are asked to find the values. Uh, other times you are given values and you are asked to find the angles. So we need to know how to alternate between them. All right, so let's start with a basic shape. A basic shape is a square. Let's start with um, a square, just a square, regular square, and a square of uh, unit length, unit. Maybe not really unit, but you just uh, give me any value is fine, but if we use, um, if we use one, one, you know, that will, that will make, make a life a little bit easier for everyone. So, um, so this is a square. And every part of it is, every side of it is one, 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 and one. And if we draw a diagonal from one of the vertex, this is a vertex, this is another vertex, so, so to call the opposite vertex. So we have created an angle. This angle, you can call it theta, you can call it, any, you can use any alphabet of your choice, but let's use the theta which we've been using. And of course, this is 90 degrees. So I want you to, Get me, let me label the sides. Let me label it A, B, C, and D. So I want you to get me the value of uh, the line BD. So what is BD? What is BD? So how do you get BD? Just, uh, just a thought. You can give us an idea and then we may use it. You say what is BD? Yes, the line BD. So how do you determine the line BD? If... Um, if uh, BC is one and CD is one. BC square plus DC square equals BD square. Okay. So you are saying we should use, um, what, what, what is the relationship you just mentioned? What, it has a name. Pythagoras term. Okay, somebody said use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and that should be um, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So according to what, um, I think that's Mohammed, right? So Mohammed uh, said BD squared is equal to BC squared plus CD squared. That's what he said, and that's correct. So now let's use that. So what is the value for BD now? So we are talking about C squared equal to one squared plus one squared. So that should give us, one squared is one plus one, one plus one, so which is two. So C squared is equal to two. So what is um, what is C? How do we get C? We square root both sides. Yes, yeah, so square root both sides. So square root both sides. This is C squared is equal to square root of two. So C is square root of two. So that's what we get here, square root of two. So this is a basic, basic shape. So, and that's going to help us to determine the angle. Okay, so now let's apply our Sokatua. I told you before, Sokatua is the beginning and end of uh, trigonometry. So let's see. So what is um, sine of uh, sine of theta? Sine theta would be what? Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, sine theta is always opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, sine theta is what then? One over two. One over square root of two. One divided by square root of two. Now, how about cos theta? Cos theta is? Adjacent over. Adjacent over hypotenuse. And that's going to give us what? One over square root of two. Uh, what, the same thing, one over square root of two. Okay, so let's do tangent again. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So that gives us um, one divided by one. Okay, so now let us let us uh, convert all these numbers. Let, let us convert it into decimal. Or even if you don't convert it yet, even if you don't convert it yet, so let's do this. We can say, 
in order to get theta, in order to get theta. So theta would be inverse of sine one over square root of two. Right here, this sign, this sign means it follows that. This sign means it follows. So cos theta, theta will now be inverse of cos one over square root of two. And tangent theta is inverse tangent of one over one. Okay. So let's just use our calculator to evaluate each of these. Use calculator to evaluate each of these uh, functions. And let's see what it gives us. Um, let me see. Let me pull out my calculator. Just give me a moment so that we can all see it at the same time. What did you say, Mr. Yu, we should do? We are going to evaluate those things using calculator now. So, for example, I can't see the screen again. So, you need, you, you need to look at your paper and tell me the number so that I can type. Can you see my screen, the calculator? Yeah, we, are, we see the screen. Okay. So, now let's do inverse of, uh, inverse of sine. So, just say second function, sine. And then what is the number? One. One over one. One over square root Divide of two. Divide by square root. Two. Yes, second function again, square root two. And then you move out of the square root sign, and then you close the parentheses, and you hit enter. Boom. So let's see what it gives. It says 45 degrees. All right? So that's the Mr. Value. Mr. A.K. Yes? Um, is arc sign the same thing as inverse of sign? Yes, it is. That's another way of saying it. Okay. Um, let me get back to the screen and write it. Let me get back to the screen. Hold on. So, okay. Now, inverse sign, inverse sign, which is written as, so inverse sign, which is written as, which is written as, Sine inverse is also called Mr. Ikebu. Yes. Is it like sine theta or sine like S I N E? Uh, S I N uh, is the abbreviation. S I N. I mean, I mean, uh, another. <laughs> some people call it sin. Um, so S I N. The the real pronunciation. The real. Um, the full name is S I N E. The abbreviation is S-I-N. The other one is cosine, S-C-O-S-I-N-E. So, uh, then it is cos. So the other one is tangent, tangent, and it is sin. Okay, so now here's what the point I'm trying to make. Inverse sign, which is written as sine inverse, is also called, also called arc sign. Arc sign. The same thing applies. Cos inverse is also called arc cos. Tan inverse is also called arc tan. So in many textbooks, in many textbooks, instead of what I just wrote right now, instead of what I just wrote, sign, instead of uh, writing sign, instead of writing sign, negative one one divided by square root of two, they will write arc sine one over square root of two. So you will see, you will either see, I hope you can see my mouse, you, had, you will either see arc sine or you will see the way I wrote it. On the other hand, the, your calculator has it this way. Your calculator, you will, this is the sign you will see in your calculator. This is this, uh, you know, the symbol you will see in your calculator to press. This one, your calculator may not have arc cos written on it, or arc tan written on it, or arc cosine written on it. Okay, so that is the way it is, ladies and gentlemen. So now, here's how the question re regarding uh, inverse operations are asked. Find the exact value of each expression. So, question: Find the exact value 
of each expression. Okay, so something like A equal to uh, something like um, arc sine negative one over two. Then B sine inverse square root of three over two. Okay, and try this one as well. C sine inverse two. So please, if you don't have a calculator, use your cell phone and get to this, um, get to the scientific calculator part of your cell phone and use it to evaluate this. Let's see. I'm gonna give you like how many minutes? Like three minutes. It's just to press the calculator, nothing else. So let me give you three minutes. So that includes some break in between. For the first one and the second one, use the same symbol, right? Yes, they should. They use the same symbol because arc sine and sine inverse are the same. So uh, don't forget if you don't if you haven't done that already, always just download download the uh, TI eighty four on your calculator. There's an app. There's an app that is um, that you can use, and it will show you. You will use your cell phone for TI eighty four. That's the reality we are facing now. So. Um, can we use the second um option like the second? Sin instead of using arc. Yeah, it's the same. I I just wrote it differently. Arc sine and uh, and uh, and uh, sine inverse are exactly the same thing. Okay. Yes. So the point I just I just made the point that in your calculator you will not see arc sine, but you will see sine inverse. And I'm telling you that they are both the same. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yes. Go ahead. Um, for the third one, when I did um, sine inverse of two, I got an error. Okay. Is that supposed to happen? It could happen. It could happen. You know, some numbers are not just possible yes. by nature. It could happen, and that's actually why that's actually why we that's actually why we did that graph. That's actually why we did the graphing. So now, based on what you just said, uh, let me sketch the graph of sign let me sketch the sign graph okay remember the sign graph that we we plotted yesterday so let me sketch it on the screen here so that we can use it this was our x axis this was the y axis um this is one and this is two and this is negative one and all these are the all these are the angles you know all these are the angles um so this is uh pi radian which is this is your 180 right here which is pi radian and this is um okay so now this time we did yesterday hold on so it goes like this it goes this way you know if you plotted it correctly it goes this way this is the peak right here and then it repeats itself it repeats itself so this is another peak another peak right here and then the maximum it got to was one, right? The maximum it got to was one. So from this point where it has the minimum to the point where it has the maximum, this is an interval. It is an interval that is very, very important and it shows where sign is limited to. So you can see that as far as sign is concerned, it doesn't have any value that is greater than one. So which means the domain, it's called domain, the X axis. The X axis, the domain is from what? The domain, let's say uh, domain, domain is from um, two pi radian, which is 360 degrees to negative two pi radian. The, the range on the other hand, which is the Y axis would be from range will be from negative one to one. So for sine, the value of sine does not exceed one. That's the point. So if you have anything that is greater than one, then you are going to get an error. Am I making sense? If you're doing sine, if you're doing cosine, it might be different. If you're doing tangent, it also might be different. So from here to here, is actually the inverse inverse function of sine. All your values are going to range between these two. Any other question before we move on? 
Oh, do you need a break? Do you need a break? Um. Yes or no? There's nothing on um, there. Yes or no? Do you need yes. a break? Yes. All right. So everybody, take five minutes break. Let's see you. Yes. I'll talk to you later. Um. It doesn't have. Let me see. I didn't. I didn't understand you, Vivian. Please repeat. Okay. I'm gonna repeat it again. Give me. A it doesn't have square root. I don't know how to use square root on the thing on the calculator you was using. Now look at the cal. Okay. Let me get get back to the calculator. Um. Let me get back to the calculator.